All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. We are here in, uh, well, it's almost April, March 31st today, and it is the end of maple syrup season. The earliest the end that I've had maple syrup season since I have started doing this out here in the last few years anyway. Uh, it has been uh, it has been a kind of a bad season, so very short season. Uh, we had a really warm winter. The temperatures just didn't uh, do what they're they're supposed to do for maple syrup, which is get some nice, good deep freezes at night into the into the 20s, and then up into the 30s and 40s with some sunshine during the day. We just didn't have a lot of those days, and so. Uh, this brings us to the end of the season, but how do you know when it's the end of the season? How do you know when, uh, when your maple syrup season is over? When do you t t pull your taps and, and get your buckets and your bags and all that stuff cleaned up and taken down? Uh, how do you know when to do that? So I'm going to take you through and show you some signs that you can look for and uh, how to know when to, uh, to, to pack up and, and pack it in and, and take your stuff down. So these are a couple trees up by the house that I'll just take down today and I'll get the majority of the ones out in the woods taken down another day. But uh, these are some silver maples. Uh, they are out in our, our yard here. Uh, we have one, one here, we have uh, one out here, and then one back by the chicken coop. And you can see these are really out in the open. They, uh, they get a lot of sunshine from all angles. And so these are usually my first trees to stop producing. Uh, they're, they're the ones that will will bud out first, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So here we have the, uh, the one of the branches from that tree, the maple tree here, and you can see the, the, the buds are just exploding. We've got a lot of new growth here, and that's gonna make a huge difference. Once this happens, once you see these buds just start popping out all over the tree like this, you can just see them everywhere just popping out. Uh, that's gonna be your first, uh, first sign that your season is over, at least for this tree. Now, back in the back there on the maple forest, which is way back in the back, some of those trees in the center, they don't, they don't bud out quite as early. And so I might get some later runs on those, but it'll be really low, uh, low sugar content, and it's just not very good. So, so generally, once I see these trees starting to bud out like this, I'll, I'll know it's time to pack it in. And here is the second or, well, <laughs> this could be the first sign. This is what is in these buckets. It's, uh, it turns brown. Uh, this, this is sap that's old also. It's been sitting here for about uh, four or five, maybe six days. But you'll notice the sap get a brown color and we've got bugs in here now because the temperature's been warm for too long. So this is, this is done, we don't want that. Once you see that tint, it starts to turn brown. That sap will start to turn brown a little bit. That's another sign that you're done. You don't wanna boil that, it's not gonna taste good and uh, it's just gross. So you can see uh, this one here also. Um, the cloudiness is because it's been sitting in here a few days. I'm not, I haven't been collecting it obviously, but you can see the uh, um, brown tint to that, and that is a sign that we're, we're done. There's uh, not anything we want out of that. You'll notice some, uh, uh, some mildew and mold that'll grow in here too as the temperatures get warmer on these, these taps and tubes and things. And so those will all get sanitized, and most of these I'll just clip the ends off. Uh, and then we'll sanitize the rest of the tube. So one of the most common questions I get asked, or a couple questions I guess, is can you leave the taps in all year round? The answer is no, they need to be pulled out. Uh, these are my favorite taps. I now have used these a couple years. They are absolutely the best. Uh, Amazon, link to these. These are a little more expensive than the black ones, but they work way better and they don't need to go as deep into the tree. Uh, so you do have to remove these taps. I take all these out. They'll get rinsed out. Uh, I'll get any any you know sap or anything like that out of these tubes, and this will all get cleaned up. And then well, they'll sanitize this before we uh, start the next season in some uh, bleach water. Now I'm using buckets here, and so I've got these nails that I have put in the trees. A lot of these maple trees, I'll have a nail sticking in these to hang the buckets on. I'll leave the nails in here. Uh, this isn't gonna hurt anything. Now, these ones, because they're up by the house, I'll actually pull these nails out because my kids run around here and I don't want them to you know, uh, be running around these trees playing tag or something and cut themselves on a nail head. But generally out in the maple forest, out in the sugar bush, um, I leave all the nails in the trees. It doesn't bother anything and nobody's out there to get hurt on them. So uh, they'll be ready to go next year to hang our bucket on. And the other very common question I get asked is, does it cause any damage to the tree? Well, so you can see there's a, one of our holes from this year that we just uh, took the tap out of. Uh, and then we've got one from last year. So there's one of the holes from last year. 
and then on this side we've got one from two years ago and three years ago uh, so you'll see here that they they heal right over uh, there there's just like like somebody put a plug in there and you don't need to put anything in the hole you don't need to do anything to it they'll heal right over uh, as this tree is expanding this bark is is just splitting here that's fine it's not going to hurt anything um, and it, it'll just keep on healing and growing out and uh, after you know five years you'll never even know it was there it'll be totally covered over well let's get to work got a few more to collect here on the house we'll get those uh collected up and, and cleaned up and put away for the year So all that stuff just gets a, a quick rinse off and then all the buckets and things will get stored in a uh, loft of the barn. Just to keep them out of the sunlight. Um, they will get dusty and things like that throughout the summertime and the fall before I get them back out next year. And so next year before I use any of that stuff, it'll have to all get sanitized and washed again. So I don't, don't put a whole lot of effort into really cleaning things off uh, before I put it away. Just rinse it out. Those blue bags, those blue plastic bags that I used for a couple of those holders, I really liked those. First time I've used those this year, and I'll probably be expanding and using more of those next year. And I've thought about getting uh, or making some DIY uh, bag holders. Those metal bag holders can get kind of expensive. They're four, five, six, seven bucks a piece, depending on where you source them at. And uh, I think I can make some. I've seen some online of people making some PVC pipe holders for bags. And so I might experiment with that. It might be a cheap way to go. And so as things come to a close for this year, I'll be taking some notes and really doing a lot of thinking and saving and budgeting for next year. So where do I want to increase efficiency, increase production? Do I want to expand more taps next year? Do I want to set up a vacuum system out in the maple forest? Do I want to use a reverse osmosis system, better evaporator, uh, a, a better bottling system and filtration system for in the house? So I need to, to, to figure out where I want to invest some, some money next year, and then that'll be the direction that I go. Uh, so there'll be a lot of thought into that. Now, I'll take any advice for you out there who have done this uh, professionally or commercially, and uh, we'll see, see what kind of things we should, uh, we should put our money in for next year and make the system better and produce more maple syrup. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed following along the journey of maple syrup here on the SSL Family Farm. This officially closes out our season here. Although not a great season, we did produce quite a bit of really good, high quality maple syrup that we just, we love. So don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Subscribe if this is your first time here. We'd love to have you tag along for the SSL Family Dad uh, uh, happenings over here on the farm and homestead. Uh, we do all kinds of things here from DIY projects, gardening, uh, producing our own hay, raising livestock and other things. And so we'd love to have you tag along for all of that fun. As always guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.